Exodus 17, and we're going to start here from uh, 14. 14. Uh, Exodus 17. 14. And let, let's. Uh, Exodus 17, and let's start from the 8th verse. We got the book of Exodus, chapter 17, and verse 8. Then came Amalek. See, remember that name, Amalek. They are Amalekites, same people. Amalek, Amalekites. All right? Then came Amalek. All right? Read on. And fought with Israel and Rephidim. All right. So now let's find out who's, who's Amalek. Let's go to Genesis 36 and 12. All right? All right? This Amalek is not talking about the Hamites or Malachites. Oh. Genesis, 13, Genesis 36, 36 and, 12. and 12. Reading out the book of Genesis, chapter 36 and verse 12. And Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. And she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Ada, Esau's wife. So you see who's, who's Amalek? Esau. Oh. That's his grandson. All right. Uh, so go, let's go back to uh, Exodus 17 and 8. Reading out the book of Exodus, chapter 17 and verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Raphidim. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto Joshua, choose, un choose us out men and go out fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the rod of Yahweh in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, and fought with Amalek, and Moses, Moses, and Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass, when Moses held up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, but Moses' hand were heavy. So what was Moses doing on top of the rock? What was he doing? On top of the rock. What was Moses doing on top of the rock? He was standing up there with his hands apart, holding up the rod. Holding up the rod like this. Mm -hmm. So you know eventually your hands are going to get tired. Right. Because it wasn't you know, like five, ten minutes. Oh. That was long hours out there. They were fighting. Right. So he was holding up the staff. So when he held that staff up, Israel was winning. But when his hands started to go down, like, oh, <laughs> then, I, then I'm next to whip Israel, but... So uh, her and Harry had to come and hold up his hand to support his hand, to keep it up wow. as that support. So when that staff was up like this, we were kicking butt. All right? That was done through the power of the Most High. All right? Read on. I'll start at 11 again. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Right. Amalek started to whip our butts. All right, read on. But Moses' hands were heavy. He got tired. All right, read on. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And he sat down because he got tired, man. He's like, wham. <laughs> All right, this wasn't just a quick one, two, three thing, man. This was a long time. All right, read on. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So you see that? Until the sun went down. Wow. That's a long time. So they probably was out there from maybe midday wow. till the sun went down. Wow. That's like around six o'clock. It's a long time. All right? Read on. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Most High said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out. The, uh, the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Mm -hmm. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovahness, Jehovah, Jehovahness, for Jehovah he, Nisi, yeah. it's like it, Jehovah Nissi, mm -hmm. for he said, because the Most High have sworn unto the Most High will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. From generation to generation, all truck our generation, even up until today. It's still happening. What is the real word that goes there? Because Jehovah it means destruction. So what is the real word? Because that's the word that the Greeks put in there. Do you know what the real word is that goes there? Uh, well, the Jehovah proves to be the most high name. I think the Nisi, uh, the Nisi, uh, 
I'm not sure. Let me look, I'm not sure the Nissi, but I have to look it up. But Nissi, it probably uh, what it says here. Look, look it up and see what it says here. Actual the, the first one, the Jehovah. It, it's supposed to be the Mosai name, which is, That's yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. I know no. uh, my study I did was yeah. that, that that word there meant destruction. Right, because the Mosai name is a dreadful name. Yeah. So his name is dreadful. Yeah. Okay. So I think the Nisi represent here like an uh, altar or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure. I have to look the, it up. I got the translation of the Hebrew yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. So this is the translation out of the Hebrew. Mm -hmm which is Jehovah Nissus, a, a symbolical name of an altar in the desert. Right. Jehovah Nissus. Right. So it's an altar that was set up there in the Mosai name of a remembrance. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So the Mosai said we're going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And that war is still going on today. It hasn't ceased. Yes. Absolutely. All right. It's still happening. Because Amalek today represents the leadership and the rulership of the so-called Jews. And they're the one that's still calling the shots behind the scene. All right. Uh, when you check out all the basketball uh, owners, they're who? Amalek. The, the music industry. Amalek. It's Amalek. Amalek. All right. The court system. Amalek. It's all Amalek. Dino district. Everything is run by Amalek. They're the brains and the and and the, uh, behind all the operation that goes down behind the scene. All right, so now from there, go to Numbers 24 and 20. And then we're gonna move a little fast, because I wanna show you something that, that's gonna lead up to even the time of the Persian Empire. We got the book of Numbers, chapter 24 and verse 20. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations. What does it mean when it says Amalek was the first of the nations? Um, the first ones that come to war with us. Right. The first that came and war against us. All right. Read on. But his latter end shall be that he perish forever. All right. Now let's go for Deuteronomy 25. Deuteronomy the 25th chapter. Uh, 25 and the 17th verse. Reading out the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 25 and verse 17. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when ye were come forth out of Egypt. Okay, so most I said, remember what they did to us when we came forth out of Egypt. All right, read on. How he, how he met thee by the way and smote the hindmost of thee. Right, so he, he took those of us in the back after we went forward, he attacked the back of us, which is the weaker link. He attacked us. All right? Read on. And smote the hindmost of thee, mm. even all that were feeble behind thee, mm. when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not Yahweh. He had no regards to the Most High. Mm -hmm. All right? Read on. Therefore it shall be, when the Most High thy power hath given thee rest from all thy enemies round about, in the land which the Most High thy power giveth thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven, thou shalt not forget so it. So the Most High said, you shall blot them out. All right, from, uh, for, uh, black out the remembrance from under heaven, and thou shalt not forget it. All right, now, who was supposed to do that? King Saul. King Saul. Uh. Did he do it? No. Uh -huh. no. So that's why we go into the story, share the story. Let's go to uh, for, uh, First Samuel 15. All right? And remember, the, remember, the Most High always leave a remnant of them. Even though he said he destroyed a whole lot of them, he always left a remnant. Because when you go into the book of Esther, who was Haman? Uh, Malachite. He was still there. He was still there. Whispering words into into into, uh, into what's his name into uh, the Cyrus. Listen, listen, get rid of them niggas, man. They don't respect you, man. Get rid of them. That's why the Most High rose up Esther. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go to the book of First Samuel, the fifteenth chapter. 
Can you start Huh? You want to start at one? You start at one. And they're still around today. Still causing mischief, man. Uh, I'm going to give you an example. When you I get a chance, right? There's a... Uh, the brother sent me a Karaza Raka. It was an hour-long show with Byron Allen on uh, the Breakfast Club. It's on YouTube. It's a, uh, I'm not sure it's called. It's, it's a very good. All right. Uh, let me show you the name. It's called. It's on YouTube. When you get a chance, uh, you all could uh, check it out. It's very. It's real good. It was an hour long. I think 15 minutes. Yeah, it's called Byron Allen and the Breakfast Club, and he was dealing with a uh, dealing with a case with Comcast. Oh, God, God, God. When you get a chance, ah, damn, it's not showing. Look it up, Byron Allen and the Breakfast <coughs> Club. It's on YouTube, and he's giving you a history of how we started out, mm. and he's showing you that the contention that we have. With the civil rights and the and the and the owners of Comcast, how and he was saying from he said as a black man, okay, here it is, yeah. And I like he said as a black man, when you are born in this country, you're black ball already. He said you're black ball, you're demonized, and the whole plot is to destroy you. And let me see, get it right here. It was real good. I was, I was surprised. I was like, what? I didn't know Barry Allen was you. You know what I mean? And, yeah, he was that deep, and he and he said, "I don't fear nothing." He said, "I don't fear." He said, "I know God loves me, and God is on my side." I was like, "What?" <laughs> he said, "He said a lot of black people are scared, but he said no." Nah. And guess what? He owns the Weather Channel. You know what I mean? So he was given the history and a rundown how we started and how he made it, and he said the odds against you, a black man, has been set from day one in the court system, in every aspect. But you know who's behind that whole thing? The so-called Jew Amalek. Mm -hmm. That bastard. He's behind the whole operation. Uh, let me find it. Uh, uh, there it is, here. Okay, it's called Baron Allen. Hey, what's up? On e economic inclusion. All right, that's the top of it. It's called Byron Allen on economic inclusion and buying the weather channel. When you get a chance, look it up. It's real good, and look at it. And he's deep. He's deep. I didn't know he was that deep, man. You know what I mean? And he started off grassroots, man. You know what I mean? And and he said uh, that his father, his mother. You know what I mean? His father was a worker in a Detroit plant, and his mother. You know, eventually she went to UCLA, UCLC, UCLA got a, 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 a degree and everything, and she instilled in him the values of of economic as a black man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And he took that, and he got up there, man. And you think he'll be an Uncle Tom and sell out? Nah, man. You know what I mean? But when you get a chance, look at it. All right. Come. All right, so uh, first Samuel, the 15th chapter. Reading out the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15 and verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Most High sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Most High. Thus saith the Most High of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel. See what Samuel is saying to him? I remember what Amalek did to Israel. So he was still around. All right. I remember what they did to Israel. So the Most High sent Samuel to remind to, to, to remind Saul. Listen, man, go finish this job. Get rid of these bastards. All right. Read on. How he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now this is a good while now. This 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 is like hundreds of years now. From the time of Samuel, from, from Egypt to Samuel. That's that, that's you looking at roughly uh, at least about. I say about 
maybe 200, 200 300 years mm -hmm. from the time we came out of Egypt. About that. No. Because from, uh, from Solomon, from Egypt to Solomon is 486 years. So this is about maybe 200 and something years, almost 300 years. All right? So read on. Verse 3. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling ox and sheep, camel and ass. So the most I told him, kill everything that breedeth. Mm. All right, read on. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telaim, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the, va in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go. Who were the Kenites? Yeah. Right, Ham. All right, read on. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get ye down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For ye shewed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul, and Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah, until thou camest to Shur, that is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. See now, see this word here, Agag? This name, Agag, is going to reappear again in history. Alright, remember that word, Agag, that name right there. Alright, read on. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul... And the people spared Agog, and the, and the best of the sheep, and of the oxen, and of the fatlings, and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly. Verse 10. Then came the word of the Most High unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he is turned back from following me and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Most High all night. So why did it grieve Samuel? Samuel loved Saul. Yeah, Samuel <laughs> loved Saul. You understand? Because at first he was doing right, and Samuel loved him, so it grieved him. And then Samuel knew what was coming down the line. Samuel knew what was coming. The jig is up, Saul. All right, read on. Verse 12. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul, come to Carmel. And behold, he set him up a place and is gone about the past on, and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Most High. I have performed the commandments of the Most High. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in my ears? And the lowing of the oxen which I hear. So what was that? What was that he was saying? Samuel said, What mean if this bleating of the sheep? How did you keep the commandments if there's still sheep and ox alive? Right. So the, so right. Basically, you didn't do what I said. Yeah. Right, that's true. But when he said the bleating of the sheep, <laughs> that's it. Bah, bah. So Samuel heard the bah of the sheep. And he heard the moan of the oxen. Moon. So Samuel said, What's going on here? I still hear the sheep and the oxen. What's going on here? Saul, hey, you, you ain't did your job, Saul. All right? Read on. Verse 15. And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Most High thy power. And, they, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. But the Most High didn't tell him to do that. He didn't, the Most High said, Kill everything. Don't save nothing. But he did the opposite. Read on. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Most High hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou was little in thy own sight. So Samuel is rehearsing the history when he was young now. He's going back now. Uh, I, it's one thing with Samuel, man. <laughs> he, he, Samuel even did the same to King David too. Yeah. All right? He set up a scenario and he said, uh, uh, David. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so Summer painted a picture of everything. Summer was, he, he was, he was, he was, he was, he was good at what he did. You know what I mean? They show he had respect for the king too. He didn't just come up and say, you know what, you damn nigga, you're going to die right now. He painted a picture to him and started explaining to him, listen man. Okay, let's read on. <laughs> Verse 17. And Samuel said, when thou was little in thy own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And Yahweh anointed thee king over Israel? And the Most High sent thee on a journey, and said, Go, and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then did, did thou not obey the voice of Yahweh, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Most High? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Most High, and have gone the way which the Most High sent me. See, now he's lying again now. It's the second time. He didn't do it. Read on. And have brought Agog, the king, the king of Amalek. So he brought Agog, the king of the Amalek. Read on. And have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Mm -hmm. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of these things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto Yahweh thy power in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Have the Most High as great delight in burnt offerings as sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Most High? Behold, to obey, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Mm -hmm. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now stop right there. See what he's saying now? Now that's very deep. You might just realize, oh, but when you stop and you pause and you look at that, it right. says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Mm. When you rebel, that's witchcraft you're doing. Oh. A lot of people don't know rebelling. That, that's why a lot of these young generations are being killed today because they're constantly rebelling. And that's why the Most High killed us in the wilderness because we were rebelling. Once you rebel, you're setting up witchcraft. You understand? So someone said, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Read on. For the rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. And you being stubborn is like idolatry. It's like you setting up idols and worshiping idols when, when you, when you are, are stubborn. So we have to look at those things, man. Stubbornness, man. And rebellion. All right? Read on. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh, he have also rejected thee from being king. So Sam Samuel broke it down to him. Boom. Listen. The most I have rejected you from being king now. <coughs> All right, read on. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandments of Yahweh and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. See what he did? He listened to the people. The most I gave him an order. All right, read on. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship Yahweh. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Most High, and, the, and Yahweh have rejected thee from being king over Israel. So Samuel laid it down to him now. Listen, man, I can't do nothing for you now, man. It's over. The jig is up, Samuel. I mean, Saul. Read on. Verse 27. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle, and in rent. And rent it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said unto him, The Most High have rented the kingdom of Israel from thee this day, and have given it to a, to a neighbor of thine, that is better than thou. And also... So you know that heard him right there, when he heard that boy. That's a dagger right there. The Most High said, listen, I'm taking the care from you, and I'm giving it to a neighbor that's better than you. That probably heard him right there more, boy. Because when you're a king, and somebody replaces you, man, and your time is not up for finish being a king. And you said your time is up because usually a king rules for how long? Till death. death. Till death. Mm -hmm. So the most I said, it's over. And you know that hurt him. He said, wow. That, that was like a dagger to him. Because he knew the next person was who? David. Mm -hmm. He knew the next person was David. Mm -hmm. All right? Read on. Verse 29. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Then he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now, I pray thee before the elders of my people and before Israel, and turn again with me, that I may worship Yahweh thy power. So Samuel turned again after Saul, 
and Saul worshipped the Most High. Then said Samuel, Bring ye hither to me Agod, the king of the Amalekites. And a God came unto him delicately. And a God said, Surely the bitterness of death is past. So he said, Oh, everything is all right now. He taught us. He taught, Oh, man, Saul ain't kill me. So uh, everything is uh, hunky dory and peaches and roses. But literally, he, know, he didn't know that Samuel was going to do a mission on him. All right, let's read on. Verse 33. And Samuel said, As thy sword have made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agog in pieces before the Most High in Gilgal. See what Samuel did? Samuel chopped him up to pieces. All right? That's vicious. All right? A prophet did that. All right? Read on. Verse 34. Then Samuel went to Ramah, and Saul went up to his house, Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Mm. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. Mm. And the Most High repented that he had made Saul king of Israel. Over Israel. All right. So now from there, go to uh, the book of Esther, the ninth chapter. I want to show you something. Now, even though Hagar died, he still had his descendants that were still around. All right. The book of Esther. Esther, the ninth chapter. I want to show you something here in Esther. <coughs> okay, uh, Esther nine twenty-four. Bring out the book of Esther, chapter nine and verse twenty-four. Because Haman, the son of Hamad Hamadatha, the Agagite. See what he says? So he's called? Because Haman, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite, which is the same name as Agar. That's his family line. All right? See that word? Agagite is just a family member. Just like you said, Israel, an Israelite. It was his family members. All right? Read on. Because Haman, the son of Hamedatha, the Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them and had cast pearl, that is, the lot, to consume them and to destroy them. Mm -hmm. but that was it. All right. But I'll try, we, we, when you start from uh, Esther, the, uh, the sixth chapter, you can read about Haman. All right. And it tells you who he is. But this part here, 924, tells you where his family line started from. The Hamadatha, 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 the Agagite. All right? Okay. Uh, and then go from there to Esther and the Apocrypha. I want to show you something. Esther chapter 16 in the Apocrypha. Esther chapter 16 and start here from uh, the 10th verse. Now listen here. Now the Apocrypha is going to go into more history about it. All right. Reading out the, the rest of Esther the, out of the Apocrypha. Chapter 16 and verse 10. For Amon, a Macedonian. Now stop right there. Now why did it say Haman, a Macedonian? Let me see if you are thinking. Why did it say Haman the Macedonian? Okay, read on. Read the whole thing. Verse 10. For Haman, a Macedonian, the son of Amadatha. See, the Hamadatha is the same people that you read in Esther the ninth chapter. Only thing here in the Apocrypha is spelled with an A, which is in the Greek form. In, in Esther here in the, in the Bible, it's in the Hebrew form. The H is in the Hebrew form, and A over here in the Apocrypha is in the Greek. It's the same people. But the Apocrypha is giving more history. It says Haman of Macedonians. Macedonians. 
Greeks. The Greeks. Mm -hmm. Who was also a Greek? Alexander. Alexander. When you read in the Apocrypha, Philip the Macedonian. Mm -hmm. All right. So he's showing you all these. This is where Esau stemmed from, and then he became the Greeks later on. Mm -hmm. He took on the name of the Greeks because you had three Greeks. You had the original Greeks, which were black. All right, which were the Etruscans. Those were the original Greeks, the sons of Japheth. Then you had Esau that took over the Etruscans, which were the Greeks. He took them over and called himself Greeks. Then you had Israelites that called themselves Greeks, or so what? Hellenists. All right? So now, when Esau took over the Greeks, which were the sons of Japheth, which were known as Javan, he called himself Greeks which were Macedonians, all right? Also, uh, uh, hold that also and go to uh, First Maccabees, the first chapter, all right? Because who was also a Macedonian? Philip, Philip. Alexander's father, all right? So he's showing you who they were. At this time, they had trans they, they transformed themselves now to be called what? Greeks and Macedonians, all right? First Maccabees, the first chapter. You start one. You start from one. All right, reading out the, the book of the first book of Maccabees, chapter one and verse one. And it happened. After that, Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian. See, Philip the Macedonian. His father was Philip of Macedonia, a Macedonian. They were all Edomites. But at this time now, they was transforming themselves to different names. They weren't going by Edomites. Some kept the name Edomites, some did not. All right? This was in the third century BC now. All right? Read on. Who came out of the land of Chittim. Mm -hmm. Chittim. Where is Chittim? Up there in the area where, where uh, 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 the sons of Japheth used to live. All right? He took over the sons of Japheth that was in there, which were the original Greeks. All right, read on. Who came out of the land of Chittim had smitten Darius king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his steed, the first over Greece. See, the first over Greece. So they took over the Persians, mm -hmm. smitten Darius, and he became the first over Greeks. Mm -hmm. Meaning they took over the original Greeks and they called themselves Greeks. Mm -hmm. Just like it said in Josephus. He said they, they uh, claim to have the antiquity of all nations. Mm -hmm. That they derive from a people that they didn't come from. Mm -hmm. So when they took over different lands, they call themselves after the names of some of the people. Mm -hmm. And they put their own name on it. Mm -hmm. Saying this is our name. Mm -hmm. wow. Alright. Alright, read on. Verse 2. <clears throat> and made many wars, and won many strongholds, and slew the kings of the earth. So that's what they did when they came back as the Greeks. All right, read on. And went through to the ends of the earth. And they went through the ends of the earth. Read on. And took spoil of many nations, mm. insomuch that the earth was quiet before him. Mm -hmm. Whereupon he was exalted, and his heart was lifted up. And he gathered a mighty strong host, and ruled over countries, and nations, and kings, and became tri tributary unto them. Mm -hmm. And after these things he fell sick. Now this is about Alexander. Mm -hmm. which came up from Philip of Macedonia, his father, which was the Macedonians. Mm -hmm. So now go back to Esther now. Now this was before they took over and started ruling. He was the forerunner. This, uh, this Haman, he was the forerunner to Philip of Macedonia and Alexander the Greek. He was paving the way for the Greeks. That's why he was up in there as what? As a spy. He was paving the way for the Greeks as an infiltrator. Amongst the Persian Empire. All right. Uh, so read uh, that uh, ten verse ten again. Verse. Yeah. The rest of Esther chapter sixteen and verse ten. For Amon, a Macedonian, the son of Amada, the being, same person we read in Esther the ninth chapter. Mm -hmm. All right. Read on. Being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood, and far distant from our goodness, 
and as a stranger received us, received of us, mm -hmm. and had so far forth obtained the favor that we shewed toward every nation, as that he was called our father, and was continually honored of all men, as the next person unto the king. Before deceit was found in him, he would have been the next ruler under uh, under uh, the Persian ruler. All right, but deceit was found in him. Because he had a plot to do what? To destroy us. Alright? Read on. But he, not bearing his great and his great dignity, went about to deprive us of our kingdom and life. Mm -hmm. Having by manifold and cunning deceits sought of us the destruction, as well of Mardocius. And who's Mardocius? Who's Mardocius here? It's Mordecai. This just in the Greek form. It was a Mordecai. All right. Read on. Who saved our life and continually uh, procured our good, as also of blameless Esther, partaker of our kingdom, with their whole nation. For by these, for by these means he thought, finding us destitute of friends, to have translated the kingdom of the Persians to the Macedonians. So you see, you see what he was trying to do. He was trying to set up the kingdom to pave the way for the Macedonians, the Greeks. Mm -hmm. So he was in there as an infiltrator, as a spy. Good. He was paving the way for the Greeks to come in. And see what he was called? Read a verse again. Verse 14. For by these means he thought, finding us destitute of friends, to have translated the kingdom of the Persians to the Macedonians. And that's his plot. It's the same, same Edomite. All right. Uh, read on. Verse 15. But we find that the Jews, whom this wicked wretch have delivered to utter destruction, are no evildoers, but live by most just laws, and that they be children of the Most High and most mighty living power, whom have ordered the kingdom both unto us and to our progenitors in the most excellent manner. Wherefore ye shall do well not to put in execution the letters sent unto you by Amon, the son of Amadatha. For he that was the worker of these things is hanged in the gates of Susa with all his family. The Most High, who ruled all things speedily, rendering vengeance to him according to his deserts. Therefore ye shall publish the copy of this letter in all places, that the Jews many freely live after their own laws. And ye shall aid them, that even the same day being the thirteenth day of the twelfth month Adar, they may be avenged of them who in the time of their affliction shall set upon them. All right, so that was it. So this Amalekite was there in throughout all kingdoms. They never cease. All right, and they're still around today too. They're still around today behind the scenes calling the shots and plotting against us. So that's why the Mosai said it should be a continual war for generations with them against us. Behind the scenes, they're plotting a lot of stuff against us. Right. All right? Because how many of y'all is aware of the mark of the beast? In the system of the mark of the beast? Everybody's aware of it? All right. So everybody understand what the mark of the beast entails? What is the mark of the beast and what does it entail as far as to your salvation as your being as an Israelite? Because it's going to come down to life and death. The scripture tells you, if any man receive the mark of the beast and his image, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High. So the mark of the beast that he's going to implement is what they call a microchip. A RIFID chip that he's going to force you to take. But, and as a matter of fact, he's not going to force you. He's going to make it in a way that is going to seem acceptable to receive it. All right? He's going to give you that choice. And you're going to say, oh, okay, I'll do it. And he's going to make you take that chip in your hand. All right? And that chip is to control you. The whole thing about that is for him to control you, to give, to give him more access to control your being. You understand? Because radio frequencies does what? What's the purpose of radio frequencies? To transmit what? 
movement. Movement, so it could control you. If you have a, a remote control, it works off of what? When you have a remote control for your car, what does it do? It starts it. It starts the car, it opens the door. The same thing with a, t a remote for your TV. It turns it off, the TV on and off. So with that frequency that he's gonna put in you, it could control you. You understand? So that's what he wants to do, control you. It's a control over your spirit. So that's why the most I say, if any man receive his mark or his image, we're gonna read about it. Most I say you're gonna be put to death. So it's gonna to come to a point that, that he's gonna to try to implement that. And he's gonna make it seem as if it's something that, oh, I have to take. If I don't do it, I can't work, I can't do it. And that's what he's gonna do. That's his utmost plan, is to make us receive that mark of the beast, that chip. All right, well, I'm gonna show you that. And if I can add to that, yes. there's an article that you can look up, you can Google it. They're gonna start a program with the homeless in Austin to track them. Right? There's articles on it already, so they're introducing it to the lowly people first, the people who are destitute, mm -hmm. and then it'll probably populate into society as well. Right. Wow. Yes. And there's actually a company right now that's doing that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, they're doing it so called so that their um, uh, their people don't have to clock in. And right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. That, that's their excuse. Right. Because with that, you have access to the whole entire system. Mm -hmm. You understand? You could do a lot with that. With that, with, that system, with that chip implanted in you. You understand? Mm -hmm. So he's moving to a level now where everything is on a high-tech level where he could control you. Yes. Yeah, they're trying to get you used to it by doing things like Apple Pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Trying to get you used to that whole thing. Right. That. Just wave it and it charges and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah. Right. right. The other one is, is, is through their... Uh, is through their car rentals. Right. So, for think of it as a businessman that's traveling, and he wants to get around quickly. He can. He doesn't have to sit there and purchase. He doesn't have to go to the counter. He just walks into the car and he starts right. up. It opens up. Right. right. Yes. I just want to say it pertains to everything called the same conversation we've been talking. I'll say from the market these two also, like we said about frequency. As we stand in the word, just down the third, we're going to be hooked up on his frequency. Continue to network with him, just down the third. The same. When all this say going to fact. We're going to hear from him because now I'm going to go back to, you know, back in Moses' days and all of them, right? Uh, what I'm going to say for us. And matter of fact, thank you, Spirit. You know, when, uh, when they left out of Egypt and everything, it was in the wilderness. And when it said, uh, what? He uh, was with them by the pillar of the day, the fire by night, right? So when all this here happens, we, we, that's why it's so important. We got to hear from him. I know I ain't selling no beast. I don't know. Yeah, but see, what he's trying to do, he's trying to have us disconnected from the Most High. He's trying to have us in tune to his wicked spirit, his wicked side of life. That's his main objective, to so have us discontinue from our true spirit from the most high. By doing that, he could fully control your movement and your spirit. You understand? So if you don't obey him, you can say, you know what, I'll put you to death. Mm -hmm. You understand? So let, let, let's, go, let's go to, I'm going to show you something. Let's go to the book of Revelation. All right? Because this whole thing is about control, controlling your spirit. All right, because he know he can't control you the way the most High does, so he has to come up with a way, a way of what using his technology mm -hmm. to control you. All right, uh, let's go to Revelation. Let me show you something. In Revelation, Revelation, the thirteenth chapter. See, and that's one aspect of of his mark of the beast. You understand? Uh, Revelation of 13 chapter, and we'll start here from uh, verse 1. Starting from the 16th verse, Revelation 13 and 16. Reading out the book of Revelations, chapter 13. But, but stop there, before we read, let's go to uh, the 14th chapter. The 14th chapter. And uh, let's uh, start from the 8th, uh, Revelation 14 and the 8th verse. Con, reading out the book of Revelation, chapter 14 and verse 8. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So, how is that possible? How did he make all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication? How did this country make 
all nation drink of the wine of the wrath of all fornication. Through her policies, uh, political policies. Correct. And what? And what else? To the merchant, merchandise. It's three major things that this country controls the world by. It's three major aspects that they control the world by. Religion. Mm hmm Commerce. Right, which is economics. Politically, religi religiously, and economically. That's how they control the mass of the people. By religion, by politics, and economics. Which is money, wealth. All right, that's how they control the mass of the people. So that's how, read that verse again. Verse, what is that? Uh, the eighth verse. Eight verse. Verse eight. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city. What makes America great? Technology. Technology and her economics. This is the greatest wealth of economics and money, America. There's no country like America that has wealth. Even though Africa has the resources, America has the wealth of all the money in the world. No country in this world makes money like America. Money circulates through this city and country in trillions of dollars every day. This city could never go broke. Don't tell anybody that company said the city is broke. No. They divert the money so that you don't gain the capital. But this city could never go broke. Never. <laughs> All right? They divert that capital to the different bankers and rulers so that you don't have access to it. But this city could never go broke. Never. All right? This is the greatest wealth in this earth. Africa has the natural resources, but they go and they steal those resources and bring it over here. You understand? All right? So read up for us again. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of her, of the wrath of her fornication. And all nations have succumbed, or have been influenced by the wine of her fornication. Religiously, <laughs> economically, and politically. All right, read on. Verse 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image. So it says, if any man worship the beast and his image. All right, read on. And receive his mark in his forehead. And receive his mark in his forehead. All right, go ahead. Or in his hand. Or in his hand. So either they're going to put, they have two choices of doing it. Put it in your head or in your hand. But the easiest and most acceptable way is to put it in your hand. All right? Because most people say, hey, well, why you want to put it in my brain? Some people are think for a while. Are you putting in your head? Oh, that's no problem. Go ahead. That's like a tattoo. Go ahead. Do it. Yeah. You understand? Uh -huh. So he said, if any man received the mark of his image in his head or in his hand, because you're going to put it in your hand. All right? Uh -huh. Read on. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh. See what it says? The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High. Read on. Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. All right. Now go to the 13th chapter now. So the Most High is telling you, if any man receive that mark and that image in his, head or his, fo in his forehead or in his hand, you're going to drink of the wine of the wrath of the Most High. All right, the 13th chapter and uh, the 16th verse. Revelation 13 and 16. Verse 16. You want to start at 15? Uh, 16, yeah. And he calls all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. See what he said? He don't care who you are, rich, poor, rich, he said both small and great from the highest to the lowest rich and poor free and bond all right read on and that no man might buy or sell save he that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name all right so you that's what the, that's his ultimate goal for you to receive those things 
All right. Read on. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. Right. And that's his basic setup of his system is 666. Six, six. I mean, it represents a man that's going to be running the system. All right. Yes, we know this system is, is, uh, is anti-Christ. But it has to be somebody to run the system. Every house is built by who? By somebody. So if you have a house, it has to be ran by somebody. Understand? So his system is going to be set up where it's going to be, everything's going to be controlled by him. Right? And he wants people to receive this mark. All right? And that's what he's pushing for. Now, some people are going to uh, uh, readily accept it. Some is not. All right? Because the scripture tells you also, hold that. Go to Revelation, this uh, second chapter. But before we go to go to other 20 chapters. Revelation 20. I want to show you something right here. Uh, actually, Revelation 19 and 20. <clears throat> Reading out the book of Revelation, chapter 19 and verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophets that were wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. See? So he's going to deceive people to receive the mark of the beast. It's going to be by deception. All right? It's nothing sincere. It's all deception. All right? Read on. And them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. All right. Now go to Revelation, the second chapter. Revelation 2, and start from the 10th verse. Reading out the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. So you're going to be tried. All right, Advers uh, adversity is going to come upon you. You're going to be tried. Uh, All right, read on. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. So you have to be faithful unto death. All right, read on. And I will give thee a crown of life. He that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So you have to overcome. <laughs> All right, and the second death is what? Uh, the lake of fire, yeah. All right. So those are the things that's coming up. And also, too, you hear of rumors of wars and all the different wars. Yes, it's going to be war, but a lot of it is going to be rumors, wars, until it builds up to the real final outcome of war. And how is the most, uh, yeah, hold up. I was going to say uh, uh, the 666, the number 666, those are vibrations. Right, the vibrations, yes. Just, is that political, is military, is economic? It's his whole entire system. His whole entire system is based on that. The oh, vibration okay. of the 666. Okay. Yeah. All right? It's based on everything that's contrary to the Most High. Uh, All right? Because uh, I, I was... Uh, I was just going to say... Uh, there is going to be a final war. All right? Mm -hmm. And... How is that war going to be fought and how is it going to lead up to the war? What's, what's going to be the trigger thing that's going to cause this war? Let me see if you are really thinking or observing what's going on. What's going to cause the nations to go to war? Here. Yeah. Russell, I'm going to credit for more. Like, say, we, like, say, the change about the beast, we, we're not able to get access to certain things. If you want to start robbing, still need more? No, no. The nation, what's going to cause the nations to go to war in the earth? It's a prelude to that. It's happening now. Something major in the earth that all nations need. Fighting over oil? Oil. Mm -hmm. Coal. Oil. The purpose of Donald Trump in, no in northern Syria, he claimed was to destroy ISIS, right? Uh, but what was the real reason why he was in northern Syria? Oil. oil. To take control of the oil. 
He slipped up and said it. Yeah. Yeah. it that was the whole thing, was to take control of the ore. So the Most High is going to bring them down into that region because it's going to be all about the ore. Let, let me inform you. The entire system runs off of oil. Right. Uh, if there's no oil, the system can't function. Uh, All right? They need that oil. Uh, but in the midst of that, China needs the oil. And who else needs the oil? Russia. Russia, Russia mm -hmm. and America. America needs the oil more so than anybody else to fuel the economy. Mm -hmm. So that's why they station and position their military in northern Syria to do what? to protect the oil. It wasn't so much a fight against ISIS, but you see how clever he is? He used that to get his stronghold into Syria. He's in somebody's country stealing their oil. You understand? Your sister, raise your hand. Yeah, so they're transitioning now from oil to gas. Mm -hmm. You don't think that the, um, the nations will go to war because Esau is declining? That too, he's declining. So by him declining, what is he going to do now? He's going to fight to hold on to what he has. Because right now China is trying to take over. To take over too. And that's what he's worried about too. And China needs the oil too. Because what they is, it's a pipeline that's being ran. It's supposed to be ran from, I think from, it was supposed to be ran from uh, Iran, I think to, uh, to China. But the United States trying to prevent that. And they're allowing the Saudi Arabians to funnel all the oil to everybody else. Mm. You understand? So America has an agreement with Saudi Arabia to supply the oil to everywhere and to lock China out. And Russia wants to get in there too so they could transport their oil too. So it's going to be a big fight eventually. Mm -hmm. And that's where the most I see is going to bring them down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat in the Persian Gulf. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's going to boil down to eventually. The oil. They call oil, what's the term they call oil today? Black gold. Black gold. Mm -hmm. Black gold. Mm -hmm. And that's what they need. Oil fuels everything in this society. Without oil, the city was shut down. Mm -hmm. They need it. It's a must. Mm -hmm. No food. No food, nothing. No train system, nothing. Everything runs off of the oil. All right? And that's what it's going to boil down to. They need that oil. So they have to have access to that oil. Yes. That's the same thing they did in um, with Saddam Hussein. Yeah. They said that he had nuclear weapons or he was killing people. Right. Just to get access to the oil. To get access to the oil. Then they got over there. So now they're trying, they're trying to work in Syria to get Syria out the box. They got rid of Gaddafi. They got rid of Saddam Hussein. Mm -hmm. So it's about getting access to the oil to continue to keep their empire fuel. Because where does most of their oil come from? No. America, mo the majority of America oil comes from where? Canada. From Canada. 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 You understand? The domestic oil that they use comes from Canada. But the reserve oil comes from where? The Middle East. So you have to have a reserve oil because you're constantly using what? The domestic oil every day, every day. So you have to have reserve backed up. So the more reserve you have, the better it is for you in the time of what? Emergency situations. Because remember, you're using this, this oil every day to fuel the system. So it's easy to get the oil from Canada, where it's right across the border. But it takes longer to transport the oil from where? The Middle East to over here. The only way you could get it at easy access is if you run pipelines. And that's what China is trying to do. They're trying to run pipelines from Iran to China to get easy access to the oil. Yes? To add on to what you're saying, too, um those other countries that they're fighting with are moving away from the petrodollar. Right, mm -hmm. right. Because what Nixon did in 71, he connected the American dollar to the Saudi Arabian oil. He took America off the gold standard and connected to the oil. You understand? So that's what the dollar is backed by, by oil. So that's why they're fighting so hard to keep that oil. So the Mossad is going to drag them down, right down to the Middle East for that oil. And that's where he's going to judge them. We're going to read about it in the scripture too. Yes. So that's the reason why they destabilized Venezuela? Venezuela too. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's go to that. Let's go to uh, Revelation. All right. And we're going to close up the terms at uh, uh, 2.30. All right. Let's go to Revelation real quick. And uh, we're going to uh, 
we're gonna end the class and that we're gonna pick up uh, probably next week or the next following week. Uh, Revelation 16, all right? Uh, Revelation 16. And let's start here from uh, the 10th verse, Revelation 16 and 10. We got the book of Revelation chapter 16 and verse 10. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And where is the seat of the beast? It's located in two places. Where is the seat of the beast? Uh, in America and Russia. <laughs> America and Italy. Oh, no. Right, oh, no. right. The Vatican, the Vatican, and, Vatican. and America. Mm -hmm. The Vatican, which is religious, mm -hmm. and America, which is what? The political, mm -hmm. economic, and the military branch. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Because that number six, six, six times. You know, the, Pope. the Pope, right, and the Vatican, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. All right. All of it ties in together. Economics, political, and religion. Yeah. That's how they control and rule the earth. All right, uh, read on. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain, mm -hmm. and blasphemed Yahweh of, he of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. Mm -hmm. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And that's going to happen very soon. All right, read on. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So they're going to be prepared for what? War. For war. Mm -hmm. Off of that oil. Mm -hmm. All right? Yes. Isn't the, isn't the Euphrates dried up at this time? It's part, partially dried, but not fully dried up yet. Mm -hmm. It's in the making. All right? But it's not fully dried up completely. Mm -hmm. Because the purpose of it being dried up is for what? So huh? So they could gather in the bed, not cause them to cook. Right. So they could gather in that area. Because if it's moist, you can't gather there. It has to be solid. So they could all gather in that area with the what? Tanks, trucks, and the full uh, military uh, weapons and armor and everything. All right. Read on. Verse 13. And, also, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto, unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to, ga to gather them to battle, to the battle of that great day of Yahweh Almighty. And that's what it's going to boil down to, that battle. It's leading up to that. All right? It didn't get to that point yet, but it's leading up to that. All right? And the more Trump keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to anger the nations. Because what, what is Trump doing? What is Trump actually doing? He's isolating the nation and he's making America great again. <laughs> so it's all about America alone. Nobody else but America. And that's going to make the nations angry. Because everybody want to get a piece of that pie too. You understand? You can't deprive me of a, a, a You understand? And like I said, there's no honor among thieves. They're all a bunch of thieves. So they're going to fight for that, for, that, for that economical wealth and power. And America is grabbing up everything around the world, man. They're locking everything down, man. And the nation's starting to see it. Wait a minute. What, what, what is Trump doing? He's taking everything for himself. And he's living up to that word. Make America great again. <laughs> All right. Read on. To gather them to the battle of the great day of Yahweh Almighty. And that's what it's coming down to. All right. Read on. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth. And keepeth his garments. And what is your garments? Is it your physical garments that you wear? What is your garments? No, the word, the knowledge. All right, all right. Read on. Least he walk naked, and they see his shame. Right. And when he says see your shame, mean what? You, you have been obtained or taken on what the Most High gave you. All right. Read on. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And that's where they're going to be gathered, Armageddon, the place of the troops. Mm. All right? That's where it's going to boil, up, boil down to. Uh. All right? Russia is going to be involved in it too. All right? Okay? So with that, I'll end the class and I'll continue uh, maybe the next following week.
and then we get some more uh, basic uh, current events and uh, stuff like that. All right? Shut them up. Come on, man. Uh, shut them up. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man.